To you I lift up my soul, O my God. In you I have trusted, let me not be put to shame. Nor let my enemies exult over me, and let none who hope in you be put to shame. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Good morning, everybody. Friends, if we haven't had the chance to meet, I'm Father Shane Demon from the Vocations Office in Sioux City, and I had the privilege of serving here from 2009 to 2013, and it's great to be back and celebrate in this new facility. Congratulations on the dedication and consecration of this wonderful temple of the Lord. Friends, we begin anew, not only in a new church, but we begin a new liturgical season with the starting of the Advent journey coming towards the celebration of Christmas and the Lord's incarnation in our midst. As we begin this new journey of grace, let us take a moment to enter into these saving mysteries by first calling to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. <clears throat> you, Lord, are our Father, our Redeemer. You are named forever. Why do you let us wander, O Lord, from your ways and harden our hearts so that we fear you not? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of our heritage. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down with the mountains quaking before you. While you wrought awesome deeds you could not hope for, such as they who have not heard from of old. No ear has ever heard, no eye has ever seen any God but you doing such deeds for those who wait for him. Would that you might meet us doing right, that we were mindful of, of you in our ways. Behold, you are angry and we are sinful. All of us have become like unclean people, all our good deeds like polluted rags. We have all withered like leaves, and our guilt carries us away like the wind. There is none who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to cling to you, for you have hidden your face from us, and you have delivered us up to our guilt. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hands. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. O Lord of Israel, heart, excuse me. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. Let us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. O Shepherd of Israel, hearken from your throne upon the cherubim, shine forth. Rouse your power, and come to save us. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. Once again, O Lord of hosts, look down from the heavens and see. Take care of this vine and protect what your right hand has planted, the Son of Man, whom you yourself made strong. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. May your help be with the man of your right hand, with the Son of Man, whom you yourself made strong. Then we will no more withdraw from you. Give us new life, and we will call upon your name. Lord, 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus, that in him you were enriched in every way with all discourse and all knowledge, as the testimony of Christ has confirmed among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you from firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by him we were called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Show us, Lord, your love and grant us your salvation. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, Be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a man traveling abroad. He leaves home and places his servants in charge, each with his own work, and orders the gatekeeper to be on the watch. Watch, therefore, you do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether in the evening or at midnight or at cock crow or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all. Watch. The Gospel of the Lord. It was a time of great economic prosperity. It was a time culturally in which lots of different ethnicities all came together in a community. And it was a time in which there was great sexual immorality. Sound familiar? Does it sound like the United States? It was actually the city of Corinth in the ancient world, a city of great economic prosperity located near a port in which lots of trading would pass through there, lots of different ethnicities, and because of the ancient temple of Artemides, lots of immorality as well. And St. Paul records in his writings that when he went to go first evangelize this community, he did so with great fear and trepidation. I would imagine it would be like walking into New York City or Chicago for the first time and trying to figure out how do I let everybody know of the power of the risen Jesus that he encountered when Christ appeared to him on the road to Damascus. And yet Paul created a Christian community there and he had some good success. And over time, he wrote to that community of which we have two letters in sacred scripture addressing issues that came up among the earliest Christians. And in this first paragraph of his very first letter, which we have today for our second reading, St. Paul rejoices with great enthusiasm and great gratitude for the graces that he sees so present among the faithful Christian people. He notes that the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus is enriching them with great discourse and knowledge. He notes that they are living witnesses and giving testimony to the presence of Christ. Friends, as the vocation director of the diocese, it's my job to assist the bishop in helping others find the next generation of those who will give testimony. 
And certainly it, it helps when we have more priests, deacons, and religious. But it also helps when every single person is giving a radiant witness to the power of the risen Christ. And I know in my years here in this community, I certainly experienced that among so many. And I trust that that witness is continuing to this day. And yet, we need more. As of today, we have 48 active priests serving in 24 counties of Northwest Iowa. And they're ministering to approximately 100,000 Catholics, 25% of whom are native Spanish speakers. We have eight seminarians at the moment who will be ordained, God willing, if they all persevere over the next eight years. I'm working with one new applicant for seminary right now, and I'm working with two young women who are entering religious life. And we need more. And we don't need warm bodies. We don't need people with a pulse. <laughs> We don't need people who are just going to charm their way into people's lives. We need people who have experienced what Paul has experienced, the power of the risen Christ in which they are eager to go share the Lord with others. And at a time in which we have seen for several decades now the unraveling scandal in which people entered the church and wanted to minister in the church and were almost mercenaries against the church, living off of the church for their own prestige and esteem, it's very clear that they weren't interested in always bringing about the power of the risen Christ to others. And that was the mission of Paul, though. He wanted to share the power of the risen Christ with others. And brothers and sisters, not only was he interested in just simply being a minister, not only was he interested in simply getting the good news out there, we see in today's second reading a particular gift and a particular grace that Paul received in his ministry. For he could sit back and take delight, as he says, in a people that is not lacking in any spiritual gift as they await the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, I can honestly share that experience with Paul. And I know so many countless religious deacons, priests, members of the clergy can say the same thing, among a catechist as well, that you can look around your community and you can see spiritual gifts on fire. You can look around this community and you can say, not only are you in a new living structure of this building, but more importantly, there are graces unfolding in the hearts and in the minds of all these witnessing baptized Christians in our midst. And it should give you, as it gives me, and I know it gave St. Paul, a great sense of zeal, a great sense of joy, and a great sense of gratitude. Where's the next generation going to come of those who can take delight in sharing the good news with others and then watching the Holy Spirit set the community on fire? St. Paul certainly delighted in that. And I'm eager to see the next generation of those in Webster County who will step forward and keep that tradition going. And in the meantime, we watch and we wait. We watch and we wait in anticipation of the celebration of our Lord's Nativity, which will come on Christmas. But more importantly, at the beginning of the Advent season, we watch and we wait for the day in which our Savior will return in glory at the end of time. Anytime I'm out visiting with students or young children, this question comes up most frequently. Father Shane, when's Jesus going to come back? When's the world going to end? When's the new Jerusalem going to be ushered in? There's always a curiosity when people want to say, when is this world going to end? And I think hidden within that question is a deeper desire. When is Jesus coming more deeply to me? We know he came once 2,000 years ago in Bethlehem. We know that he will come again at the end of time. In the meantime, he keeps coming to us in very subtle ways with small little nudges of grace, small little manifestations that he is still with us. 
And so the church invites us to be ready, to be watchful, and to be alert for the very subtle ways that God continues to speak to us. And it is certainly my hope and prayer this day that all of you have the spiritual attentiveness, the lack of spiritual drowsiness, to note all the little graces that God gives you along your journey. But I'm also eager to see what fruits will come about in the next generation of those who will proclaim the gospel and help form a Christian community that is really capable of noticing the subtle language of Christ Jesus. One who never comes to trample us, one who never comes to impede our freedom, but one who always wants to simply give little breadcrumbs of grace as he says, come to me and let my spirit live within you. May this be a blessed Advent season for Holy Trinity Parish. And may a new generation step forth to take great delight and great gratitude in the wonderful spiritual gifts that are present in our midst. And let us together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten that made consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As members of God's kingdom, let us together offer these petitions to our Heavenly Father for the needs of the church and the entire world. For the church, may the Lord look graciously upon us as we proclaim the gospel message. Let us pray to the Lord. For civics leaders, May Christ strengthen their convictions as servant leaders of all people. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who face hunger and malnutrition, may God grant them strength and provide the means for them to obtain their daily bread. Let us pray to the Lord. For our family members and loved ones who struggle with mental illness, may God bring them healing and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. that families will strive to make their homes places where children can hear God call them by name. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. So for swift end to the coronavirus pandemic that afflicts our world, that God will heal the sick, strengthen those who care for them, and help us all to persevere in faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For those who have died, especially Susan Hicks, and Alan Bornzik. 
may God's mercy grant them eternal rest. And for the intentions of this Mass, Irene Secursa, Joe Pede, let us pray to the Lord. For the prayers we hold silent in our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And to conclude these petitions, let us offer a special blessing and lighting of our Advent wreath. Lord our God, we praise you for your Son, Jesus Christ. He is Emmanuel, the hope of the peoples. He is the wisdom that teaches and guides us. He is the Savior of every nation. Lord God, let your blessing come upon us as we light the candles of this wreath. May the wreath and its light be a sign of Christ's promise to bring us salvation. May he come quickly and not delay. And we ask these things in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated for the preparation of our gifts. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us, that may, and may you grant, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below, gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. 
holy, 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 Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Walker, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Friends, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion antiphon, the Lord will bestow his bounty and our earth shall yield its increase.
Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures, through Christ our Lord. Friends, for your parish announcements this week, uh, please note that the parish is participating in a stewardship of vocations week, whereby there's um, a great emphasis on the priesthood, diaconate, and religious life. So please follow the parish's social media and website accounts for special videos, articles, and opportunities to learn how each of us can support the mission of vocations here in the parish. Also note that next week there will be adoration from 7.30 a.m. on Friday, December 4th, through noon on Saturday, December 5th. And if you're interested in filling one of the slots, please contact Jan Yoakum. And all children of the parish are welcome to attend the Children's Rosary next week, December 6th, at the 9.30, at, at 9.30 prior to the 10 o'clock Mass, and they will meet here in the main church. Friends, uh, just in conclusion, it's great to see you all here. It's always great to be back in Fort Dodge. If I can do anything for you, I'll be around after Mass. So don't hesitate to let me know how I can better assist your families. Um, and just know of my prayers for all of you. And congratulations again on such a beautiful temple. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.